Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. Tonight, we've got some great products we're going to be looking at. First of all, I'm so tired. So I want a really good night's sleep tonight. I'm going to do it with a really cool mask that is going to help me sleep, get rid of all tinnitus symptoms by giving me audio audio in binaural stereo. Oh, you just got to see it. It's cheap. It's affordable. It's great. And we've got an Android TV stick. Yes. That's going to replace our Amazon Fire TV stick and even our Raspberry Pi 3 connected to the TV. And our Roku stick. And our Roku stick, they uh, they do make... Yeah, you have one of those. Cool. Yeah. It's going to replace that? Mm-hmm. Nice. We're going to be looking at an Android device that you plug into your TV. It's got exceptional Wi-Fi. It plays YouTube videos seamlessly in full HD and even up to 4K. You don't want to miss this. Stick around. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Welcome to the show. Hey, everybody. I'm Robbie. I'm Sasha. And I'm Jeff. How have you guys been? So good. Are you ready for this? Yes. Yes. It's Wednesday, our time. Now, you might be watching this on Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, some unknown. A year from now. Maybe they've added an eighth day to the calendar because you're watching this 157,000 years in the future. Right. Whew. Cat five day. That That's would right. be amazing. But for us, this is On. this is the middle of the week for us in the studio live, and I look forward to this moment every week. As do I. This week's going to be fun too. It we should got be a lot of great stuff to look at. It should be fun. Yeah, I, I don't think we've ever not had fun. Agreed. So Agreed. It would be really sad after 559 episodes to blow that streak. 559 episodes. Whoa, Jeff. I know. Robbie and I did have like a five episode streak where every time we tried to do something, I pretty much broke it. I think that was like the technical difficulty month yes. where, you know, we'll, we'll blame it on the positioning of the moon or something like something that. Something happened. Yeah. But we're not having and any we, of that. We broke that streak and now we're on to awesome shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the shows now, we're, that word. now we're in the streak of awesome shows. <laughs> nice. So you are here just in the nick of time. <laughs> For the streak of awesome shows. <laughs> Let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Yes. First of all, Category 5 TV apparel is available at cat5.tv slash shirts. And thank you to everybody who has picked up a Category 5 t-shirt or a new everyday t-shirt. Um, even we've got the uh, new kid on the blockchain shirt, right. which we joked about. And it's actually and it's a thing. You can get it at cat5.tv slash shirts. It's a really cool way to support the Category 5.tv network. What we do here is we create family-friendly broadcasts that are available to you, your family, your friends, everywhere in the world, absolutely free. That's what we do. In order to do that, we have to be able to fund the thing, and it costs a lot of money. So you're able to support that by buying t-shirts, by buying products that we show on the show, by using our links, and by using our partner links off of our website. Things like that. And of course, you can become a patron, and there are a variety of ways that you can support us. More information is on our website, category5.tv. Nice. We also do have some editions of Dead Effect 2 VR left to give away. Not very many on Not here. very many. A limited number of Dead Effect the 2 VR. The stack was like this, and it's like down to Ta-da. like... That means many of you are winners already. Mm-hmm. If you find yourself not in that position, you are not yet a winner. Here is how you become one. You email category5.tv... Or co- at... No, you don't it's do something. that. Contest it's at... The, just Send an email send randomly an email. to the interwebs. <laughs> exactly. And it will find its way to us. Contest 
at category5.tv. That sounds more realistic. That's that's a real address. Oh, yes. Um, and <laughs> let us know who you are, where you're watching from, what you're watching on, questions, comments, thoughts, concerns. And no we will concerns. enter you into the draw to win one of our very few remaining copies of Dead Effect 2 VR. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel like hanging out in the VR world, uh, you can check us out on Google Play Music. That's right. We are on there. So you want to go to category5.tv slash subscribe. Nice. Lots of good stuff there. <laughs> yeah, you can subscribe to any of our shows, as a matter of fact. It's so true, you can. We're Category 5 Technology TV. Jeff and Lawrence is uh, new every day. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of other shows there. Um, incidentally, we're going to be looking at a product tonight to help you to sleep, and nature sounds are a great way to do that. We have a nature sounds program. That's Go right. Figure. Immersive nature sounds. You can actually tune in to not just the video, but the audio, and it's immersive, so uh, it's recorded in binaural 3D audio. If you wear headphones, or what we're going to show you tonight you can hear everything around you so really what it's about is we're hooking you up to completely disconnect from the real world audio visual with the VR who needs people I need people Jeff <laughs> I am people Jeff. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. these are our friends that we're hanging out with well, right I, now I, I know through digital means yes yes no germs that's right. Did you know you're more... Okay. <laughs> no, you don't even have to sanitize after this visitation. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so last week we covered the PT... Or a couple weeks ago, PTC weeks. camera. Yes. Yes. So... Uh, we have an update on it about an adapter. Yeah, do you remember we? I, I showed what I soldered myself. So we got this PoE adapter. That m means power over Ethernet. Mm -hmm. So we've got this great PTZ camera. All these short forms, right? Great tech show, all these short forms. PTZ is pan, tilt, zoom. So you think about a camera that can pan left and right, tilt up and down, and zoom, so in and out. So PTZ camera, that's what it represents. It means you can digitally, through an app or through a program on your computer, a web browser, you can control the positioning and the zoom of right. the camera. It's great. Um, but one of the things with it is that you've got to have not only Ethernet or Wi-Fi network connectivity, but you also have to have power to it. Right. And so that means this wall wart that's got to be plugged in and then plugged into the camera well i came up with this uh with this little dongle that would convert power over ethernet from yes. a uh, yep. from a surveillance camera of all things oh, okay to work with the ptz camera we were reviewing which you can find out more about and, and actually get the, the device, cat5.tv slash PTZ. Uh, but then one of my friends, Brett, he found a device on Amazon, which we've now added to that link so you can pick it up directly because not everybody has the mad soldering skills of Robbie. You know what I'm saying? You've seen my soldering skills. You have a loose definition. You of mad. have okay. No, I mean mad, like you know, mad hat or like mad. mad hatter. Oh, fair enough. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I saw in a matter of seven days you like I'm improved by like a hundred percent. She's the kindest person like, in the in the world. Yeah. You started from the bottom. Now you're here. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> So Brett found an adapter on Amazon that is exactly Wait. what I created, but it's like two bucks. Uh, the one I made cost six bucks. Oh, you've been <laughs> undersold. <laughs> uh -uh. And the one I made is this like three inch dong, four inch dongle. This one is just like a little tip that you just plug onto the adapter. Well, that, so there it you go. It, it exists. But if you, if you do like size to price ratio it's a better value for there the size you go. it's so how many dollars per inch <laughs> of the adapter right. so this thing is is going to allow you to use power over ethernet on the ptz cam camera that we reviewed right and it's like it's all pre fanned angled so you don't have to be a master soldering guru As like me <laughs> <laughs> that is so sarcastic. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, if you haven't yet watched that episode, check it out. How many episodes have I messed up soldering on? <laughs> yeah. Now, oh. if you do have that PTZ camera, maybe you're monitoring it through your enterprise server and you need some software to help you with that. Mm. I've heard that there's a great version of Nemzet. <sighs> do you know anything about that? Like to tell if the camera is up and running? 
Well, just anything to monitor your server. Do I know anything about NEMS? <laughs> Do I know anything Anything in NEMS version 1.4, perhaps? Uh, well, NEMS 1.4 is coming. It's like on the threshold of release. I've been loving the updates. Oh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you've got to. At Robbie Ferguson. And uh, NEMS 1.4, so this is a, uh, an enterprise monitoring server for yep. the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. So with a Raspberry Pi microcomputer, you can monitor all your devices and find out what's up, what's down, what's right. having problems. Yep. If hard drive space is low, it'll warn you, that kind of stuff. It's fantastic, but it's really evolved over the years. There's been so much community support. It's been a lot of fun to do. But NEMS 1.4, I'm so excited about it, Jeff. I can't, I'm, I'm, Sasha, you need this at your office. Yes, I do. Think about yeah. this. It's a Raspberry Pi yes. that will tell you if your chiropractic software hasn't run its error scan. Its error scan. Since oh. May 30th? Okay. Yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> It'll warn you before it happens yes. that it's happening. Oh. So you get emails and you know that this is happening, that something is going wrong before right. it actually goes wrong <gasps> and becomes critical. I do need You've that. You've got two drives in a RAID 1, one of them has <gasps> failed, and you may not know, and maybe you're not monitoring it on a regular basis, so it will alert you that one of those drives has failed, those kinds of things. See, I've, I look at my network at home and I go, I haven't had a need for NEMS because all of our devices are used and then i got into cryptocurrency and i've been mining turtle right. coin with my you want to know that your miner is up mm -hmm. that's correct mm -hmm. it's completely headless and yep. so every once in a while i log in i'm like oh how are my hash rates doing zero what oh no i've been down and i have no clue for how long right so imagine so, being able to monitor your hash rates on the miner yep and be able to and keep track of things yeah i mean yep. yeah. there's we just no become best friends we you did. did who did you and I. We already are. I know. What happened? Wait. You Did developed we fall, NEMS. We fell out last week. That's why he wasn't here. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Then he I came up with NEMS. Suddenly, you were, again, I thought you were working. Like the middle child I was born to be. What? Why are you guys middle or best friends? And where am I? Because yeah. NEMS. You, you are the NEMS glue that connects us together. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sustained. <laughs> <laughs> Check out NEMSLinux.com. But why I'm so excited about this is because with version 1.4, Sasha, best friend yes. Sasha. Yes. Um, best the, friend Robbie. Yeah. They, the, the product has evolved so much. And I call it a product because it really is a commercial application, but it's right. free. It's free. So. Cha -ching. That's how we do things, and that's why we have so much trouble paying the bills. <laughs> <laughs> we just do awesome things and give it away. Yeah. But NEMS 1.4 is coming, and it's like we've got the attention of Nagios. We've got them writing about it. We've got people <sighs> talking about it that are in the industry, and Admin Magazine has actually published a, a full, like, eight-page color article about it. Well done. And, like, this is all happening as I'm just kind of like doing this in my spare time when you know tinkering you have away spare time not because of <laughs> NEMS now between yeah. category yeah. 5 and NEMS that's and and family time like this is my spare time uh, so with 1.4 I did something crazy Jeff okay NEMS was always based on Nagio, Nagios Pi right okay so this is a Raspberry Pi distro of Nagios so it was based on that, and then I built it up over the years, and it's been getting better and better. Right. NEMS 1.4, I blasted everything that's ever been done, wiped it completely, started from scratch, and built it, compiled it from the ground up. Right. So if you're familiar with Nagios, this is like version 4.3.4. This is the, the best web-based responsive interface for Nagios that you've ever seen, and the capability of doing all your administration through a GUI and you don't have to deal with Nagio scripting. Right. It's which amazing. Is beautiful. It's amazing. So that's what NEMS 1.4 represents. And we've got backers like uh, Logic Supply. This is a computer manufacturer that is providing hardware so that we can bring NEMS to their hardware. That's so cool. that we can bring it to you as an appliance. We've got people uh, like the manufacturers of Fitlet 2. Check them out. The f it's all one word, Fitlet 2. It's a fully integrated, no moving parts, completely solid state computer. And this little wow. itty bitty thing, it's like a million times better than a Raspberry Pi as far as its actual power goes. Mm -hmm. And it's being, it, NEMS is being ported to that. This huh. thing that I built and gave away for free, they're putting it on that and s selling these devices. That's cool. That so, is so cool. There's so much exciting things coming from Nagios Enterprise Monitoring Server, and I'm excited that we're going to be showing it on the show pretty soon as well. Yes. Because it's coming. 
It's coming. Yay. The updates have made me very like anticipatory. It's been neat seeing it evolve because Nagios has traditionally been very onerous to yeah. maintain and to get up and going. And it can be a nightmare for a sysadmin to create a Nagios server and get it up and going, create the scripts, get monitoring. Five minutes, you're done. Making life what? simple for everyone. And it's all based on a GUI and a web user interface with responsive layouts that works on your mobile phone or your tablet. Yep. What? You definitely need to check it out, folks. N E M N N E M S N E M S Linux dot com. Albuquerque Turkey. Yeah. I'll just hide because I said the name wrong. Uh, okay, ready to get into the show. Yes. Because that was like just housekeeping. But I get excited about really cool projects that we've got going on. I mean, Plex Pi is another one where we started talking on the show mm -hmm. about putting Plex on a Raspberry Pi. And so then I imaged it and gave it out. Yeah. And now there's like hundreds of people that are using my image of Plex yeah. on a right. Raspberry Pi. That's how we and run so it. So it's evolved. Yeah, we, that's how we use it at home. And actually, I've got some friends who live in Malawi, Africa, that there you go. they have our guest access so they're constantly checking out the stuff on my network wow through raspberry pi it's, it's beautiful nice so plex pi is another example so that's yeah. kind of what's neat about this show so we'll show you something and so you know some of the things we're showing you tonight you got to buy if you want to get your hands on it but a lot of the things we're, we're going to show you how to do things and then we're going to take what we did and package it up and give it to you as a download and it's free and you know you can get it and how cool is that very cool. I can't think of too many TV shows that, that do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Maybe there's lots. Mm, yeah, I'm not coming up with think any. Think of one. Yeah? Just ours. Oh, just, just, <laughs> just ours. Just us. Just ours. Repeating just the stars. obvious. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. so we've got a couple of things we're looking at today. What are we looking at first? Uh, well, we're, we're going to get to the product that we're looking at oh, tonight. Because these things have been sent to us to review, and we've got to do it. It's like an obligation, but they're cool things that we want to show you. But before we get into it, Sasha. Yes. Have you ever been on Facebook? In the past, I have been on Facebook. Or email? Often on email. And has anyone, like your husband or someone said, what's the password to this? Or what's, the, what's your credit card number? Any of this kind of information that you would never send over Facebook. I just had this today on the way here. My wife called me. And what does she say? She's like, I need to know that password. And what did, has, have you ever had that happen? I think so. Yeah. Pretty sure yeah, that we've pretty all sure had that, that that's scenario. exactly what Maybe yeah. we can't pinpoint an exact moment in time. Jeff I think can because so. it was pretty it just happened. Tomorrow ask him he'd be like I can't think of a time. That's right. But today, so she said what's the password to that thing? Yeah, and the best part is I'm going uh try this. Try this. Try this, try this. So you're giving her all this. We had 16 different options and none of them worked. None of them worked. Okay, but now you've given out as many of your passwords as you can think of. Yes. So who knows what those passwords are for. And there's this thing called a man in the middle attack. And what that means is, okay, so I'm the man in the middle. Sasha. Yes. Could you tell Jeff your password? Oh, my password Just is password. Yeah. Password one, two, three. Could you hear that? Password one, two, three. Yep. Yeah. I heard that too. Because I'm the man in the middle, right? And so if I go into a public Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, hot right? So I'm sitting yes. at the coffee mm -hmm. shop. I've got my phone. And I'm doing what I think is a private conversation. Well, I'm actually... Who's the man in the middle? Well, the coffee right. shop. Or anyone who's yeah. on that same Wi-Fi network. Because now, remember, right. as soon as you connect to the same network, Jeff, you're on the same local area network as I am. Right. So you have a local IP address, and you're able to monitor traffic that is happening from my device. Correct. Okay? Right. So man in the middle says, I can hear what you're saying. So you just shared your 16 passwords, and I can hear it because I'm the man in the middle. Well, what if there was a service that's absolutely free that kind of helps with that by saying, okay, only one person can hear this. And when Jeff hears your password, I'm going to destroy all records of what you said. Right. Okay. That would be wonderful. Do you remember Maxwell Smart? Yes, the shoe phone. Yeah. yeah. And what was it like the exploding... Here's, here's everything the, pretty oh, much. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's, the pass, here's the secret message or even, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, what well, was the cartoon? Mission, Mission what Impossible. was the cartoon, too? There was uh, a cartoon... Um, I'll get you next time, Gadget. Oh, Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget, yes. <laughs> I'll get you next time, Gadget. He was the same. So yes, this message will self-destruct. And Chief Quimby and always got burned. Exactly. 
right? So there's a service that you can bring up just strictly through your web browser and how cool would it be if you could have a one-time message that you send? And if it, if it was called a one-time message, wouldn't it be right that it would be one time in your browser? So the number one, T-Y dot M-E. So you head on over there and I say, okay, well, my password, Jeff, is password 123. And then I generate the link. And now it's going to allow me to send that link. So I can copy that link and I can now email that to my friend Jeff or send it to him by text, send it to him by Facebook or however I want to do it. Now Jeff receives that link and he clicks on it and it says this message will self-destruct. <laughs> now notice I'm connected over a secure connection. So everything that I typed there, password 123, was encrypted going to the server. And because of the nature of their service, we make that very valid assumption that they're encrypting it on their end as well. Right. But the communication that's happening here is completely encrypted. So if we jump back to Jeff's note that he is open now, we can view that note, and there's the note that I just sent Jeff. My password is password123. But wait, some man in the middle has access to that URL that I just sent Jeff. And yep. so they click on it, and it says, hey, hold up. The note you're trying to view was already accessed. Notes may only be viewed once, once. and then they are destroyed. <laughs> one T Y dot M E. One time. Just like that. One time, one time. That's Easy what to was remember. going through my head the whole time. I'm not even listening, I'm just the song. Great service. Check it out. Jeff, what have we got coming up after the break? Okay, so coming up after the break, mm. we are going to take a look at an Android TV stick that has significantly, significantly better Wi-Fi uh, than the newest Raspberry Pi. Oh. Better frame rates on video platforms like YouTube and just Perfect. straight up cool. Nice. Awesome. Stick around. For a limited time, get your hands on limited edition shirts from the Category 5 TV network. These high quality shirts are manufactured by Teespring, a fundraising website, and your purchase will help support the shows we produce. Get yours today and send us your pictures to be featured on the corresponding show. Visit cat5.tv slash shirts to support us and get your official network shirt today. cat5.tv slash shirts. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Y'all ready? Yep. yep. We're going to get into an Android TV stick. Now, I've got my Amazon Fire TV stick. Okay. And to be honest, we haven't been uber impressed with it. Right. First of all, something that is incredibly lacking from the Amazon Fire TV stick. There it is. Do you notice it? Okay, there's a power inlet, but where is the USB? Where's the capability to, to plug in a keyboard or a mouse or a receiver of any sort? Yeah, how do you... You don't, Jeff. You don't. Oh. Yep. Okay. It has, so. it has Bluetooth, so you can do oh, okay. things with compatible Bluetooth devices. But oh. all in all, I mean, it's an okay device, but for the price... I think it would be nicer to have a more robust Android-powered solution. And this is right. Android-powered, the Amazon Fire TV stick, but it's like branded to Amazon. It's proprietary yeah. in a lot of ways, and the fact that the, the hardware is so locked down is pretty poor to me. Now, the other thing about the Fire TV stick, like the Raspberry Pi of all generations that include Wi-Fi, doesn't have very good Wi-Fi. Okay. And my Wi-Fi in the house is... Not the greatest, but it's pretty good, and I would expect that it should work on the TV that's you know only about 30 feet away, one floor above. Right. right. But it doesn't work that great. That's unfortunate. So it's a little disappointing. And the wow. Raspberry Pi, same thing. So we set out to find a device that had better Wi-Fi and just Android, something that we can bring up YouTube and the kids can yeah. watch their shows and stuff. Because 
to connect a Windows computer, like a set-top Windows system or something like that, now I've got to get antivirus for it, which I'm not opposed to, but I have to worry about the kids accidentally clicking on something that is now yep. malware. Because, you know, my, my seven-year-old, he just searches. I, I wanted him to look up a video on YouTube the other day, and I told him what to search for, and he started searching for it in the address bar rather than on YouTube.com. Right. So he's seven years right. old. I'm trying to teach him that, hey, that's not the way you do it, son. Uh, but when he does, and he clicks on the wrong link of the 10,000 results in Google, mm -hmm. it's going to take you to something less. Your computer is infected with a virus. You've probably yeah. seen, you know, all these things, and then, oh, well, okay, so click, 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 and all of a sudden, now you're really infected with a virus because yes. you said okay to the wrong question. So Android kind of protects us against that kind of thing because it's Android, and it's going to keep us a little bit safer. Right. So this device from, oh, and <laughs> you might want to actually see <laughs> the device. This device! <laughs> I was doing this like Vanna kind of style waving, and you didn't even get to see my hand gestures. Uh, but Kintax is a, uh, a hardware creator and seller who has sent us this to review. And we're just going to get a quick look at what this device gives us. So there we go. It's a little bigger. We can see right out the gate. Then let's get it out of the, the packing here. So this becomes an unboxing video, folks. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? A little bigger than the Amazon Fire TV stick, for sure. Let's get the cable off of there. There we go. Right. So there's the difference. This one looks more like a USB flash drive. This one looks more like a little itty-bitty computer kind of right. thing. First things we notice, okay, first of all, it has HDMI connection right there. So that's going to plug right into your TV or a little extension cord, which I presume is going to be in the box. We'll take a look. But it does have... SD card reader, that's lacking on the, uh, on nice. the Amazon Fire TV stick. Uh, that card reader will only go up to 32 gigs, though, according to the specifications, which is a little disappointing, to be honest with you. Uh, we've got a power inlet, and then we've got two USB ports. So we've got USB 3 uh, right here. This big one, the full size, is USB 3. And then we've got a USB 2 micro, uh, which is going to allow us to plug in peripherals. So the side one is just for providing 5 volts power to the device. Now, what's this red thing on the side? I mentioned about my desire to have better Wi-Fi, and this one includes a little bit of a signal-boosting antenna that's going to hang off the back of our TV there and give us better Wi-Fi. Uh, so let's look at the specifications here just a little bit. First of all, the CPU is a Rockchip RK3328, so that's a uh, four-core, quad-core. Yep. Uh, that's the Cortex A53, and it goes up to 1.53 gigahertz. So for the form factor, it's pretty good. I think that's yeah. pretty pretty impressive. Um, we'll see if it generates any heat. I haven't noticed any in my preliminary tests. Uh, <laughs> GPU. So the video output of this is with a Mali 450 MP2, and that has OpenGL. It's got 4K video output up to 60 frames per second. So right there, That's blast the Raspberry Pi yes. out of the water. Yeah. Okay? Um, so we've got pretty good video output at 60 frames a second in 4K, 2K, 1080p, 720p, I presume. Uh, but you plug this into your TV, and boom, you've got instant access at up to 4K resolutions. Right. Uh, two gigs of RAM in built. 16 gigabytes of storage. There's also an 8 gigabyte version as well. So that's like for your apps that you install. But remember, right. we've got a, a 32 gig SD, SD card, card yeah. slot. So right. we can increase that by up to 32 gigs. Again, uh, I hear manufacturers saying, hey, it'll support up to 32 gigs. And then I stick a 128 in it and it works. So, so the specifications say 32 But you maybe. Can always, yeah, you can try something bigger. Mm -hmm. 32 is pretty low for today's Absolutely. Specs. So I kind of, when I read that in the specifications, I was like, so Kintax, um, might want to up that a little bit. Now, could that yeah. just simply be because if you have a, say you put a 128 in there and it's yeah. full of data, that it bogs down the processing of it? Could that well, maybe I don't be see why? how because it's storage, right? Right. So it's mm -hmm. the storage system of the, like a file system. So it, basically the device is a Linux device that sees right. that right. as a second storage medium that you can save photos to, save apps to, save app data to. Uh, but then again, with something like this, do you really need more than that? You're not going to be downloading 
huge Did applications. You, say you really need more storage. I mean that because it's not a computer. Fair enough. It's mm -hmm. a TV set top box that right. allows you to watch YouTube and streaming video platforms, presumably Category 5 technology TV. Exactly. Better be Category you know, 5 yeah, technology. Yeah, exactly. TV. Otherwise, out the window. Um, and uh, so you don't really, I don't think, need um, an astronomical amount of space. Now, do no. keep in mind, though, USB 3. So okay. if you wanted to, you could plug in an external hard drive. Right. That's not a problem. Power it with external power because you don't want to power it off of this. And you're going to have full speed access to that hard drive. That's cool. That's good a times. Really good times, Jeff. Really good times. Wi-Fi, I mentioned. Okay, so it's got 2.4 gigahertz, um, 802.11, uh, which is BGN. And it has 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well. So you've got the BGN AC and Bluetooth 4.1. So it's not Bluetooth 5. But Bluetooth okay. 4.1. So if you wanted to use wireless earbuds from Jabez, right. if you want to use your wireless headphones from House of Marley, mm -hmm. then you're able to do that with this device and listen to your music, listen right. to your shows wirelessly, which is kind of a bonus. I definitely like that. But also the ad other advantage to having inbuilt Bluetooth is a lot of keyboards. Like you get something like what we use for our teleprompter here. This is a Bluetooth keyboard. Mm -hmm. So with this, I simply turn it on, sync it to this, and boom, oh, or pair it to this. And now I've got a keyboard, and you can get a full-size Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and get a combo unit, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And it uh, operates a lot more like a computer. We're going to plug it in and see how much like a computer in just a couple of moments' time. One kind of final thing I'll say because this is portable and you think hey this is something that I could take with me when I travel right yes right and you could because it's HDMI you can plug it into the hotel TV and now you've got because you know, they provide Wi-Fi so now you've got YouTube Netflix whatever else the USB port supports a dongle from your ISP which so, is so cool like a cellular dongle oh okay. I love so that now with a like the, the with this stick here and then the uh, like i don't know if they call it like a rocket hub or whatever from your isp like a cellular internet mm -hmm. hub mm -hmm. that you plug into this now it provides its own internet so Which you, is awesome you don't even need wi-fi at that point perfect for the cottage <laughs> all right so let's let's actually let's get finally into the box and see what else we've got here because i want to plug it in for you while there's still time okay Ooh, jumping are right falling out. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do we got? What do we got? Okay. Let's get that aside. We've got USB cable, presumably for power. We've got a little, uh, oh, look at that. USB micro to full sized USB 2. So that's going to allow us to plug in standard size peripherals to the micro port on the device. That's good. We've got a power adapter. This is a 2 amp 5 volt adapter. USB micro, and we've got that little HDMI extension cord, which makes it simply easier for us to plug into uh, the back of our TV because maybe, maybe, maybe that's not going to really right, fit Right, if you've got a wall back. mount. Yeah, if it's too work. close or whatever, it, it may not plug directly into the TV or maybe there's other peripherals around. So this gives you a cable that you can kind of hang it or, you know, double-sided tape it to the back of your TV, right. that kind of thing. Should we plug this in and see yes. how she works? All right, so... It's unanimous. <laughs> well, technically, I didn't vote. I was going to say no just to be smart. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Like, we've looked at it, but we're not going to actually look at it. You're going to see now how, how complicated it is to set this up. Right. Right? Because that's... Okay, so that's I've got it's okay. two cables. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now down here, I've got... I'm going to grab an HDMI cable here. I've got an HDMI jack that I can use. Here we go. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. This is going to go... So far, this looks like something I could do. Well, I got an HDMI cable going <laughs> out to my TV. Which is pretty standard. Yeah, yeah, and now an HDMI cable... To your device. And the only reason I have that cable is because, hey, we're kind of far away from you mm -hmm. watching in California. Right. There we go. It's plugged in. All right. All right. So let's switch over to that screen and okay. let's plug that in and see what happens. Give it some juice. Give it some Ooh, power, folks. Instant. instant. All right. Let's see what comes up. Now I've got a. Oh. Pretty. That's some good processing power right there. And wow, that was a quick boot. We're in. Yeah, not bad, eh? Not bad. Good performance, good performance so far. Uh, I've brought this with me, and it's got a USB dongle for a wireless keyboard. Okay. 
So I'm simply going to plug this directly into the device. I know you can't see, but you can visualize. It, it's there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn on that keyboard, switch back to the screen for you. And, oh, instantaneous access. Boom. Chrome. Came with it. What are oh. we doing? Oh, yeah. Somebody's been testing this bad boy. So... Performance-wise, I noticed that things are pretty zippy to open up, and that's that nice rock chip processor. Uh, things don't display absolutely perfectly on my website, but not bad, not bad. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was just still loading. It does look pretty darn good. Uh, scroll down a little bit here. The one thing that I don't like about these kinds of devices is you've got to remember that this is Android. Right. It's built for a tablet. It's built for a phone. So you'll notice right. there's no scroll bar. I can't right. grab it like a computer and just scroll you're down. Meant to, like I'm just flick it. flicking with my finger, so that means clicking the mouse, scrolling, clicking yeah. the mouse, scrolling. So it's a little bit of a different experience, and you've got to get used to that, but it's not that bad, and certainly performance-wise, seems pretty good. So I'm clicking on a video here, and I click and pull up, and click and pull <laughs> up. <laughs> not, not the best UX but that's not that's Android. But that's yeah, that, I was gonna say, that has yeah. nothing to do with that's the device what it itself. Is. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hit play. And yeah. load times. There oh, we go. Oh, that was quick. Nice. Quick and nice shirt I'm wearing. I know, right? So <laughs> One of the things that is important to me because this is going to be a set top device is, you know, full screen video, is there is it good? Is the frame rate good? And it looks fantastic. Yeah, that's some pretty clean video. I'm pretty impressed by that. So this is just off of our website, category5.tv, via YouTube, that kind of stuff. Um, it looks pretty good, and it's yeah. playing out of the box. Now, keep in mind, I did plug it in. I went to two websites. I tried a couple of different things, but I didn't, I didn't install any drivers or anything like that. Let's head on over directly to YouTube, which, because I've got my, um, my stuff, like my account in, it wanted to log me in first. Right. And you notice I used to work with LEI before they went out of business, and so that it wanted me to log in as them. Sad day, sad day. Uh, okay, so this is YouTube. It looks pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, you've got to get used to this kind of clicking and scrolling action. It looks like I kind of got to, oh, I got to use the keyboard to maneuver now. Yes, oh, okay. you will get that sometimes. It doesn't matter what you're using. I mean, our Android box at home, yep. uh, same deal. I mean, we have, I think, the same remote. Oh, yeah? So the quality, the clarity oh, that's good. is brilliant. I don't know how to turn it off so that I can not breach copyright. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but there you go. I mean, so that's working really a treat. Uh, a couple of the features that we want to look at. Okay, if I go into all apps, yep. I did try installing a game, but I couldn't get it working. I'm not too sure what's going on there. But I did notice that we've got things pre-built in like Wi-Fi display and I did a quick pair to my smartphone and instantaneously I had access to my phone really I, yeah I wanted to show you this because sometimes web apps maybe maybe I can't get Netflix working on there because it's a Chinese device and Netflix right. is pretty particular about the the geolocations yes. of their viewers kind of thing so maybe I want to bring up Netflix on here just as an example right right or maybe I want to bring up I watch the countdown every new years on my phone and that gives me a chance to now s cast it to the device so let's actually do that I'm just I brought up Miracast on my computer on my phone here and I'm gonna click on my phone which it already detected impaired and hit OK and oh it's already connecting and there we go Wow so oh, now I'm actually in my phone so if I bring up like I guess YouTube on my phone now what's that look like so there we go oh, oh, yeah. wow right so now if i turn my phone sideways i'm physically turning it sideways there it's oh, re it does the adjustment it adjusted itself and this is done now keep in mind this <laughs> is done completely wirelessly so what i'm seeing on the screen here is being cast to the device through my Wi-Fi network. I didn't have to set any, didn't even right. have to set anything up. It was so super simple. So I think there's some really good value in that on its own. And so then if I click on my vlog from today, for example, for patrons, um, there's a there's some latency there for sure. That may be my network. I don't know. But still, the point is, it, there it goes. It okay, does it's, work. okay, it's it's kind of. It was warming up. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, you know, how YouTube will kind of crap down the quality if 
if your bandwidth is not very good. Right. right. So, but it works. It works great. There you go. So well done. Okay, so now I'm stuck. I can't bring you back. So I've got to actually turn off uh, Miracast in order to get back. There we go. Oh, okay. Now I'm back there. I can escape back. Right. And there's our menu. A couple of other quick things here. We've got the Play Store, obviously. Uh, RKMC looks a lot like you know, like M XBMC or Kodi, that yes. kind of thing. Yep. Um, so that comes pre-built in. You can add your channels. And to get out of that, it's the power button over here. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, if you're looking for a set-top box, um, this is obviously like a little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. The Wi-Fi on it is spectacular. It's really, really good mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. And my house, no latency, no problem oh, running beautiful. YouTube. So watching YouTube videos, that's really all we need it for. Right. right. And it works perfectly. It doesn't have an accelerometer like your phone does. So if games require that you be able to turn the phone like this, obviously it's not going to work. But right. games... I presume like uh, Angry Birds, that kind of stuff where That'll it's all mouse-driven, you can, you can do that. Yes. Yeah. So. Exciting. Very cool. Yeah, check that out. It's uh, cat5.tv slash r33 because that's the Kintex R33 Android TV stick. Check Exciting. them out today. Good times. All right. Well, uh... Well, uh... Well, uh... Going to take a break? I think we probably should. Better take a break. Yeah. I think so. Think? We yeah, gotta I appease heard that. our sponsors. We yep. gotta pay the bills. Maybe watch this short. What's ad. coming up, Jeff? <laughs> uh, so coming up, we're gonna help you sleep with a sleeping mask. It's got a twist. Do you know what that twist is? I have a feeling we're gonna find out. That's uh, that's right. It's got built-in audio. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. Welcome back. We are about to put you to sleep and make it quite enjoyable. <sighs> it's going to be one of those shows, eh, where we put them to sleep? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Ah. No, we are going to be reviewing a sleeping mask with some audio components to it. Okay. So I guess the first question I have to ask is, why would you want audio component to a sleeping mask if you're going to be sleeping? This is what I normally wear when I'm sleeping, Jeff. Really? Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, if you ask you my need, wife, oh. she'd say it's because I snore. Do you have tinnitus? I, I do. Huh? Oh my gosh, so bad. So you hear the <sighs> ringing all the time, and it's like my wife doesn't understand that the fan is not because it's hot out, it's because I need the noise. So it's true. I, I sleep with these in my ear, Jeff. Okay. Sasha, I've found a brand of earbuds that are flat so that I can lay on my side and it doesn't hurt my ears. Right. Right? But they break. Yep. I buy them in bulk. Oh my gosh. You can buy bags of them off Amazon oh. for tw 20 bucks for 20 earbuds. But they break all the time, and I, you know, I feel bad to scrap them. I cut the cables off, and I recycle them, and everything else. Not ideal. No. Right. Why do I do that? I listen. I learn. I, I sleep better because I have audio that's, you know, maybe it's nature sounds. Sometimes it's nature yeah. sounds for me. Sometimes it's podcasts. Maybe it's an audio book. What do, you, do you ever listen to things at night? Uh, believe it or not, most of it is uh, music if I ever listen music? to anything. Music? Is it yeah. like gentle Yes. Tinkly stuff, no words. Yeah, it's usually like some sort of, like, mm -hmm. the stuff you hear when you have like a massage. So it's like, it's a meditation thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like weird your flutes and birds yeah. or whales. <laughs> well, that's like, I'll call that like solitudes or maybe like, I guess technically they call it like new age music when, you know, not technically it doesn't have to be new age, but right. you sometimes hear that kind of stuff with, uh, with like 
ambient bird sounds yes. and things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love nature sounds. I actually have a show called Immersive Nature Sounds where you can you can listen to nature in binaural 3D surround sound with just a standard pair of headphones. And to sleep with that, like a thunderstorm, for example. Yes. I've got a 12-hour thunderstorm on, on that show where you can listen for 12 hours. It's just perfect for sleeping with or studying with. Um, that would be 12 hours of stress for my dog. <laughs> well, you're not putting this on your dog. <laughs> okay. But it, it helps me to sleep. It helps me to get my mind off things is the main thing because I'm right. a very go, go, go guy. I'm always programming. I'm always coming up with inventions. And so when I go to bed, it's like I need my mind to declutter. Right. So listening to a podcast helps. you also need to be able to helps. not see things. That's true. Okay. okay. So earbuds are not perfect. What do you use? Uh, earbuds. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing? Oh. Yep. Same kind of deal? And this seems like it's new to you. Like you've it never... is. Well, I have a white noise generator that sits beside my bed. Okay. But I don't put anything. Similar kind like, of thing. Similar Dave, idea. Dave, your husband, hears that. Well, yeah, it's for him. Oh, okay. I probably... So, that's, so maybe if there... <laughs> so when I was single was back before, gift, before I was actually. married, so many, many years ago, yeah. um, I had a speaker that was under my pillow, and that would help me because that was under my pillow, and I could hear it. But now, being married for as many years, I can't do that because my wife would go nuts and we tried yeah. it for a while any but, any wife would go nuts yeah when we You're first nuts. like i always fell asleep to music when we first got married like if a if a cricket passes gas my wife wakes up oh, so yeah? the fact that i would normally sleep with music she was just like i can't so, handle this and so of course she wins <laughs> out happening. so uh, listening to a reenactment of the hobbit was not in the cards for no, you no definitely not so i had to learn to fall asleep with Nothing. Right. Painful. And that's when the ear ringing tinnitus comes in. And yeah, it's bad. The ah, thoughts start going. Good. So earbuds are not okay. perfect. Ugh. Never liked them. <laughs> They're a little uncomfortable. Then along comes cat5.tv slash mask. You ready for this, Jeff? Yes. Because I feel like we're we're like one with this right now. I can... Sasha's like, oh, that's weird. It's not Jeff weird. Jeff is like, okay. yeah, this is something that I need. It's not completely weird. I want to It's know. not completely I... weird? It's, it's a Thanks, little... Sasha. You're <laughs> so sweet. All right. So first of all, this is cat5.tv slash mask, and it comes in a nice... Hard shell Jabiz. case. It does look a lot like a Jabiz case, but it's not actually, it's not a charging case. This right. is just a holding case. Sasha, you're doing some traveling coming up, so... Yes, Dave and I are going back to Newfoundland, so... Do you usually sleep with a mask when you're on a plane, or...? Well, this is what would work for me. I don't need, mm-hmm. I don't need a sleep mask, and I don't need mm-hmm. audio or anything in my home. My home is my cocoon, but okay. uh, when I'm in public and needing some sleep, yeah. this is what I would yeah, need. And it's hard to sleep on a plane. I'd mm-hmm. imagine so. Yeah. I've never been on so a ex- long enough flight, but if so you were going exciting. from like Canada to, well, we uh, say, to Australia. And that was a long flight. Yeah. It was a seven and a half, uh, just the one jaunt over the ocean. And uh-huh. it was painful overnight because you got the, <laughs> oh, yeah. Of the plane. Oh, yeah. And, and the kids just throwing like, up. <laughs> and parents yelling at their kids. Yep. And, oh, yeah. All yeah. that stuff. I okay. feel like I could use this to Newfoundland. It's a sleeping mask. Okay. Just a sleeping mask, right? Not right. on this side. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just hold on, Jeff. Don't get ahead of yourself. Ruined it! So first of all, the thing that i got to point out is that it is a special type of Velcro. So if you feel this, it's not yeah. the kind that's going to get caught on. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I it's pretty see neat. That. That's very cool. It's not going to get caught or damaged, but here we go. So I'm going to put that on like that. And now... Can you I see me? I feel like no, you're daredevil. Many so, you know, it's a sleeping mask, right? Right. With a twist. So this particular one, let's get back here for you. And no, oh, that's, that's oh, that's the wrong. Oh, that's a beautiful little Android <laughs> device. Look at the back of here. So we've ah. got stereo headphones built into the sleeping mask. And here's the, uh, the inlet right here. Okay. So in the case is a one and a half meter cable. I like that this is detached, Jeff, to be honest with you, because I always, you know, I damage the cables because you, you roll over and you, you damage it. So I've had this actually get pulled out a couple times and it still works just fine. It's easy to eject, which is a good thing because if I roll over, it's not going to get damaged. Right. And it works quite well. So there you go. So it's stereo audio built into a sleeping mask. Oh, okay, hold on. Can I try it yeah. on? Well, well, no, no, before you do that, I'm plugging in. 
You're going to plug it in? Oh, and then I, can I, I try it on? You got some like dubstep beats here. that you're going to put on? I am plugging in. Okay, Hold so what, what's going to play it's here? It's an audiobook. An audiobook. Okay. Okay. Make it happen, Jeff. I'm waiting for it, Jeff. Uh, j I just hit play. Okay, turn it up. Okay. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can hear it. Turn it down a bit. It's blaring. <laughs> it's blaring. He has a very nice voice, but... It's David Is it playing? Yeah. Uh, did it put David it too quiet? Suzuki? Yeah, too quiet. You muted it. <laughs> Here, a little just, more. I'll, I'll go forward. Turn it up. <laughs> Pump up the jam, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. Perfect. Uh, All right. You want to try that on? Try, I want to okay. try. Okay. Sasha's going to try that on. So there you go. So there is a Bluetooth model, but I decided to go with the hardwired because I like that it does not use batteries and right. I don't have to worry about it like running out of battery life while I'm sleeping. What do you think, Sash? He does have a cool voice. Yeah. It's David Suchet. The guy's got an amazing voice. Here's a couple of things that I've noticed in using this mask over the okay. past couple of uh, days. Since Sorry that I bored your mask. So I've tested it. Here's the thing. Okay. It's comfortable, yeah? Okay. Yes. Is it? It is comfortable. It's comfortable. It's padded. Feels good. Here, Jeff. All right. You got to try it because you're, you're the guy who, who needs one of these. It is comfortable. Yeah. And I have a smaller head and it yep, still was work. nice on me. I also think if I wanted to get into a crime fighting career, it would work for that. Just just drill yeah. a hole through Cut the eyes. Cut some holes in that. Listen oh, to yeah. my music while I'm like. Oh yeah, you could have your own you know, sounds and and everything like your exactly. whole soundtrack yep, of that's, your life. That's what I think. Dubstep beats all the way. <laughs> Cat Five TV slash mask. You know, it's a simple thing. It's cheap. It's a, it's affordable, uh, but it's well built. It works well um, and comfortable too. The it is comfortable. Is quite comfortable. I imagine. Um, you know, we're all, we're, we're various shapes and sizes here, and it seems to fit all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you'd ever have any trouble with that fitting. I, I don't no. think realistically. So, I mean, even if you had a really big noggin, there's, there's I wonder room. if you had a huge head, if the earphones would maybe be too far forward, right. for example. Uh, possibly, but I feel like the majority of head girth would be this end yeah, of it, yeah. not between the eyes and the ears. Most Maybe. people, it's pretty standard depth. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, those are big earpieces. Hmm. So I mean, even if your ears were back and forth, you've probably got like inch, inch and a half play at least. So it's pretty good. There you go. Very cool. Check it out. Cat5.tv slash mask. The show costs me money, Robbie. Oh, do you like that? Yeah. But the show also informs. That's right. Yes. Yes. So what's going on in the newsroom? Do you know? I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the real truth of the matter. <laughs> All right. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category5.tv newsroom. Microsoft is acquiring GitHub. The FBI is advising users of, of consumer-grade router, routers and network-attached storage devices to reboot them as soon as possible to counter Russian-engineered malware that has infected hundreds of thousands of services or devices. <laughs> How's the contacts tonight, Sash? <laughs> <laughs> just asking. I just want to know. Is um, it working out? Can we increase the font size? <laughs> Apple on do you, do you are you okay? Apple okay. <laughs> Apple on Monday previewed a variety of security and privacy features it plans to add to Ma to Mac, Mac OS. OS and iOS operating systems including encrypted FaceTime group calls, password management tools, and camera and microphone protections. Asus has staged its annual Computex keynote and shown off a laptop with dual screens. But it's not at all what you're imagining. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? 
Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. Microsoft is acquiring GitHub. After reports emerged that the software giant was in talks to acquire GitHub, Microsoft is making it official on Monday. GitHub was last valued at $2 billion back in 2015, and Microsoft is paying $7.5 billion in stock for the company in a deal that should close later this year. GitHub is a large code repository that has become very popular with the developers and companies hosting entire projects, documentation, and code. Apple, Amazon, Google, and many other big tech tech companies use GitHub. There are 85 million repositories hosted on GitHub and 28 million developers contribute to them. GitHub will now be led by CEO Nat Friedman who will report to Microsoft Cloud and all and Chief Scott Guthrie, GitHub CEO and co-founder Chris Warnsruth will now become a technical fellow at Microsoft, also reporting to Guthrie. It's easy to imagine why Microsoft would want to acquire GitHub. Microsoft killed its own GitHub competitor, CodePlex, in December and is now the top contributor to GitHub. Microsoft now has more than 1,000 employees actively pushing code to GitHub repositories. Microsoft has struggled with the developer love for years and it's a big part of the reasons Windows failed and its Windows Phone failed and its universal Windows apps platform hasn't taken off. The question around this acquisition will be what Windows does with GitHub in the future. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella says we are committed to being stewards of the GitHub community which will retain its developer first ethos, operate independently and remain an open platform. We will always listen to developer feedback and invest in both fundamentals and new capabilities. I this one's an interesting story. Did not see that coming. No. Uh, what, no, I mean, when, I, when it was first announced, I was like, really? Mm -hmm. Of all the people to buy it, Microsoft? Because Microsoft, I mean, granted, I'm not a huge Microsoft fan, but they're known for taking things and absorbing them and killing the life out of it. Any That's examples? Do you have an example? Just everything. <laughs> Just <laughs> like, my black. soul. No, but I mean, <laughs> anytime Microsoft has acquired stuff, I feel like there's always been a community support around whatever it might have been. I'm, I'm blanking on things right now, but then Microsoft takes over and you get that major corporate feel. But have they taken a more open source approach as of late, like the past, say, three years? Have we kind of got that impression that... I don't think so. No? No. I mean, when I switched over to Windows 10 on my home PC... I don't feel more. No, open well, not with work. their not with their software, but with their approach to the developer channels and things like that. I, I guess a little bit, but I mean, this is completely open. So, I mean, that's the sure. great thing about GitHub is it, is it's totally open source, mm -hmm. right? And so the people idea can that contribute their own code to yeah, your code. The culture afraid, of it seems so positive. I'm afraid yeah. Microsoft's going right? to ruin it. I really am. I, how can you how can you ruin something that's so big though? Like by Microsoft is huge, it? obviously. But, but as long as they don't change it, the fundamental underlying, and they say that they're keeping that open ethos of how it works, how it operates, right. and the the underlying mindset of of GitHub. Because if if you create a piece of software and publish it to GitHub, now I can say, oh, I really wish that software would do this, this, and this. So I can sit at my computer and I can make it do this, this, and this, and then I submit it, what's called a pull request to your code. Right. So now you can absorb that change into your own software. And that's what makes it great. It's a, it's a community. Mm -hmm. It's a cloud platform that allows developers to help each other better open source. Right. And I get that. Yeah. So and are they trying to shift then? Well, I don't know. We don't know yet. What are they trying right. to do? Obviously, now they own like the place. Linus Torvalds from Linux, the developer who created the Linux kernel, 
develops it and publishes via GitHub. Right. So, you know, should we watch his cha- uh, watch his page and see if he changes his mind? Maybe he would say, uh, you know, because I, I imagine he's watching this very closely and he's going to say... <sighs> Okay, right. well, let's, let's, let's back he's, up. He's now putting his entire system in Microsoft's hands. Essentially. Yeah. But with that comes their capability of aggregating all the code of the universe that is on GitHub. Okay, that was going to be my next point. Mm-hmm. Is you are now handing over, and the fact that he's reporting to the cloud, I mean, it's not like it's just a server somewhere. I mean, Microsoft is going to access this from all over just like sure. you can with GitHub. But they're are they going to somewhere in their uh, user agreement have some sort of weirdly worded legal thing that basically says, you're giving this to us to host for you, therefore we, we own, own it, it right. or no, we no. have the it's ability open source. to... It's licensed under GPL, under um, various open source licenses. Okay, that may be the case, but if you have some amazing block of code within your program... yeah. Who's to say that Microsoft, with their new AI that they're working sure. on, isn't going to go, ooh, that's great code. We're going to take that component, put it into our Microsoft software, and you don't get a penny. But don't they have the right to do that anyways? I guess, but it, I mean, it, but if they now own the platform, does that not add some more? But them owning the platform does not mean that they own the, the code. The, the, they can't make it their own and say... It's ours now. No, because if it's licensed under GPL, now the product that they've absorbed it into has to in turn be licensed under GPL. That's the agreement behind that license. I still wonder if there's going to be some legal loophole because you're hosting Mm. it on their server. I don't know. Time will tell, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Time will tell. I'm just skeptical. But you mentioned AI, and I think about the aggregation of the code, and we think about the fact that the CEO of their AI division is now becoming the... Yeah. head of this so hey maybe there's something in that mm-hmm. that's true mm-hmm. the fbi is invi- is advising users of consumer grade routers and network attached storage devices to reboot them as soon as possible to counter russian engineered malware that has infected hundreds and thousands of thousands of devices researchers from cisco's tallow security team first disclosed the existence of the malware last month the detailed report said that the malware infected more than 500,000 devices made by Linksys, Microtech, Netgear, QNAP, and TP-Link, um, known as VPN filter. Filter. The malware allowed attackers. The malware allowed attackers to collect communications, launch launch attacks on others, and permanently destroy the devices with a single command. The report said that the malware was developed by trackers working for an advanced nation, possibly Russia, and advised users of affected router models to perform a factory reset or at minimum to reboot. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has also issued a statement advising that all Soho router owners power cycle or reboot their devices to temporarily disrupt the malware. As noted in the statement, rebooting serves the objective of first temporarily preventing infected devices from running the stages that collect data and other advanced attacks and secondly, helping FBI officials to track who was infected. The statement said that the FBI is working with the nonprofit Shadow Foundation to disseminate the IP addresses of the infected devices to ISPs and foreign authorizations to notify end users. Authorities and researchers still don't know for certain how compromised devices are initially infected. They suspect that the attackers exploited known vulnerabilities and default passwords that users had yet to patch or change. The advice to reboot, update, change default passwords, and disable remote administration is sound and in most cases requires no more than 15 minutes. Of course, a more effective measure is to follow the advice Cisco gave user gave to users of effect, affected devices and perform a full factory reset which will permanently remove all of the malware, including the first stage of the malware. Thanks. I feel like this story happens often. This is a particularly mm-hmm. large one in that... A lot of manufacturers' devices are affected. Right. I mean, it, But we it don't just... know a whole lot about the 
the cause? Like, what's the root underlying cause here? And so they can say passwords and remote administration built into the devices. So is it that somebody's written a really good bot, maybe using machine learning, for example, and attacking many different routers and mm -hmm. detecting, oh, this one's a Netgear that I'm attacking right now. So let's iterate through all the default passwords for Netgear devices. Oh, look, Net they've got remote administration right. turned on on the router. Boom, I'm in. Boom, I've, in I've installed my malware. Right. And we don't know yet who who started this and what it's They're end accusing reason. Russia. They are, and but... I, I hate to think that they would ever do something like that without knowing that there's some tie to Russia or any other culture. Right. Um, so there must be some kind of evidence, geolocation no, well, or something that's pointing that way. There must be something. It um, must have been framed. Um, but... Yeah. I, I wonder, okay, so if you reboot your router, that's great, or, or so you So it's just power cycling, right? like exactly. we looked at last week, where it's internet perfect. goes down, restart the router. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, without this new story coming out, I mm -hmm. wouldn't know that my router would need to be rebooted yeah, for anything. Would you? Should, yeah. should I just be on a schedule of doing that? <laughs> or what should what? Yeah, just factory reset every week. Every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. What can I do? Wow. Like, I feel like, how would you know your router had malware yeah like that's a weird Tough one because and i think <laughs> sometimes it comes down to to um not necessarily just using the devices that are provided by your isp because they're usually right. the most susceptible they're getting the bottom dollar on the most amount of devices that they can buy for right. cheap so that they can install them on, on all their sites and they're not always the most secure devices, and they're not always patched and up-to-date and uh, everything right. else. And they have default passwords. Mm -hmm. And by default, we don't tend to, hey, ISP came in, set up our Wi-Fi, and we use the password they gave us. Well, I mean, how many people, when they get it from their ISP, there's a sticker on the back yeah, sure. that says, this is your password, and the, yep. the technician writes it on there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you change really? it? True enough. <laughs> you can change it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think it predominantly has to do with not necessarily the Wi-Fi passwords so much as, because then someone's got to be sitting in the car within two kilometers of your house in order right. to do it, which is still an, a problematic thing. it's remote access. It's remote access through the internet, because remember, this device is connected to the, the WAN, yep. the internet. Yeah. And if it has a default login password that you would use, you ask the question, can you change your Wi-Fi password? Yes, you can. Yes. By logging into your router, going to the wireless setup and changing your password. Right. Well, what if you didn't change the password to log into your router? Right. That's the problem. A lot of times it's like admin password. So if that's what it is, and somebody, somebody's bot has found my router and can get into my router with admin password, then they have access to my network. So yep. I said, you know, maybe don't just trust, and I said, just like don't just fall back on this device that the isp gives you maybe we need to supplement with a an internal firewall that's mm -hmm. between my network and the internet um that's in addition to what the isp is giving me right and that would help protect because here's the fear sasha as soon as someone can get into that router mm -hmm. a lot of them are powered by linux for example yes they may be able to open up ssh connections so that they can now connect into it and access any of the computers on my network. If, right. if it's not Linux-based, if it's not SSH compatible or have that capability, um, they can easily get in and open ports in my network, port forwarding. Yes. And they can set up, for example, they can see every computer's IP address on my network because it, those IP addresses are being dished out by the router. Mm -hmm. Right. If I had a supplemental device that was dishing out those IP addresses, the router would never know what they are. That's correct. That's where it would help. So if they can see all the IP addresses on my network, so they see your desktop computer, your laptop, your phone, they're going to look at that desktop computer and figure, hey, most likely that's Windows. So let's open port 3389 right. just to test. Let's mm -hmm. see if Samba is open and, right. and turned on, like file sharing. If network sh file sharing is connected and turned on so that you can access your files on your desktop from your laptop, well, they can now open that up to their own computer. Right. They can access your hard drive, and guess what? Your C drive is shared under a hidden share, and they've got full access to your computer. So there's a lot of fear there with what they can be capable of by compromising that one device. So we can reset it to knock them off of it if they're on. Mm -hmm. We can factory reset it to remove what they've done, uh, but then we've got to reset up everything. 
Mm-hmm. Or we can, if you do that, please don't reuse the same passwords. Yeah, we well, can right. we can wipe it all and do all that, and then supplement with a good firewall, and maybe that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Still scary, nonetheless. It can be. Uh, if you have questions, if you're not sure anything that I just said, please send them in. Go to our website, category5.tv. Make sure you're, when you go to contact us that you select that you are sending in a question for the show. Otherwise, it may go to the wrong inbox and never get answered. So make sure you're selecting that it's to go to the show. Apple on Monday previewed a variety of security and privacy features it plans to add to Mac OS and iOS operating systems, including encrypted FaceTime group calls, password management tools, and camera and microphone protections. Apple also released a beta version of the upcoming iOS 12 that apparently kills off two iPhone unlocking tools used by law enforcement around the world to access phones without knowing the unlock code. The feature, known as USB Restricted Mode, requires that users unlock their iPhone with a password when connecting to it to a USB device. It requires a password each time a phone that hasn't been unlocked in the past hour tries to connect to a device using a lightning connection. The password requirement tar- largely neutralizes iPhone unlocking tools provided by companies called Celebrite and Grayshift, which use USB connectivity to bypass iOS restrictions on the number of incorrect pen- pin guesses that can be entered into an iPhone. With those limitations removed, police can make an unlimited number of pin guesses when attempting to unlock a confiscated iPhone, often aided by a robotic unlocking system. Previously, iOS betas had USB restrictions that required the entering of a password when it hadn't been unlocked for seven days. Those USB restricted modes were later removed before Apple issued final versions of the iOS. The restrictions this time around are much more stringent because police would have no more than 60 minutes between the time that they obtain an iPhone and connect it to an unlocking tool. We should remember that Though, though uh, that Apple has previously removed USB restricted mode before releasing final versions and may do so again with iOS 12. The new beta also features end-to-end encryption, built-in password management, and several privacy enhancements. So Sounds great. Let's switch to Apple. Well, how can <laughs> I get that but without having to get Apple? Like, how can mm. I get that without an iPhone? Good question. Chat room, this is one for you folks. I don't know if you can. I want I have, all of I've that. never heard of that USB locking mechanism in an Android phone. I right. haven't heard of that. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I want it. I'm pretty phone, like I, I'm not a phone guy. Right, I want my privacy. Chat room, do you know of Apple anything that... users? Yeah, I think that's a great idea because this is one of the things is that they're unlocking, they're making it so that the, because you know, you guess the password 10 times and all of a sudden it locks, locks you out right permanently up. kind of thing. Right. Um, but if they're using a tool over USB, it makes sense that, hey, if we disable the USB connection until you enter the password, now they can't do that. I like it. I like that feature a lot. I, I want it. I just don't want an iPhone. <laughs> I know. I no. If there's like a software that's been developed that you can download through, you know, the Android store or, or something. Well, you know what? I, I, I don't know that it would be supplemental. It's going to be a core OS feature, right? Um, but I could imagine that if it doesn't exist in Android, it will you, soon. You know, yeah. The 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 idea behind it is is non-proprietary i mean you can't how can you patent something like that right yeah so yeah that's true i'm sure that someone will make something similar on android Mm -hmm. part of the android os but will it be you know what if your phone can't be updated to version 9 of android right exactly you know well, I mean, and, th- and that will be part of it is that it won't be entirely backwards compatible. But like, I have an I, I have a Samsung phone, mm-hmm. uh, and there is the Samsung app store device that comes with my phone. Um, so I can see Samsung themselves developing an app that becomes part of the okay. right. internal system right. that goes, "Hey, do you want this? You can download it, and then that's part of the core of your phone." Who mm-hmm. wouldn't be no want? different than if you had, you know, uh, like an LG or something that the, mm-hmm. they could maybe develop their own version of it that you could download from. Okay. You know, I, I could see something like that happening. The Foo has a phone that uses NFC and a YubiKey 
uh, in order to to enforce two factor authentication. Okay. And I just wonder the foo if if that would prevent the capability of plugging in a USB cable and adding these backdoor patches that remove those restrictions. Like could mm -hmm. could I don't know what the government has as far as capabilities. No. And so, you know, can Nor they, do they, want you can they to. bypass that? <laughs> but definitely, I mean, two-factor two authentication is a good idea. Uh, I think also that simply, you know, for myself, like, I don't keep anything private on my phone. No. I would just have to change my Google um, it just, account I, uh, password and things like that. You just feel like you want your stuff to stay private, though. Like the things you've chosen yeah. to be private. Sure. You want them to stay private. Yep. So if I'm giving my phone over, say, at the border, say mm -hmm. they do a thing where they just want to check your phone at the yep. border, I, I don't want them to. We are apparently sure. now a national security threat. I, I hear. Canada? Yep. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. Oh, yeah. Two weeks ago, don't want to don't oh. want to get into that. <laughs> and don't also, that. yeah. Oh, and by the way, let's let's talk about this really cool you know what's laptop. Really, a much better story. Uh, just Jeff. for the record, we are benign. We are so please forgive us for anything we have done, because that's the Canadian way. Exactly. <laughs> We're so sorry. <laughs> we are sorry. Asus has staged its annual Computex keynote and shown off laptops with dual screens, but it's not at all what you're imagining. The ZenBook Pro 15 is a 15-inch notebook packing up to a hex-core Core i9 with 16 oh. gigs of RAM, GTX 1050 Ti graphics, and a one terabyte solid-state drive. I'm sorry. I know. It has a, a main 15.6-inch si screen capable of of 4K, Ultra HD, and it has a second screen which is different from anything we've ever seen. It's a full HD multi-touch screen in place of the laptop's usual touchpad. Asus has called this the screen pad and has designed apps including a calculator and custom controls for Microsoft Office and YouTube to run in it. The laptop goes on sale next month for $2,300 US. Oh, I love the idea. Uh-huh. I really like it. I love where this world is going. When can Why you get didn't one? Why did we think of this it, earlier? I want Come it. on, manufacturers. This should have been around forever. This is smart. Like uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful idea. But. Oh, what? However, this is Jeff. Jeff. How the many, butt. No, but how many times do people go, I dropped my laptop. Like. So you get an Otterbox now, box but, now but now. <laughs> but an Autobox isn't good for a laptop, really. Maybe. But, okay, like, if, if I was to drop this... Don't, it's mine. I, I know, but <laughs> if I was to drop it, chances are I'm not going to be damaging the keyboard. But now if you've got a screen and you have a glass plane that is your keyboard, you drop that sucker, you've doubled the chances. I feel like for the accident prone, not a smart purchase. Why <laughs> okay, are you so raining on this parade of For awesome. the record, Mr. Butterfingers over here... PSA, don't drop your laptop, especially if it's $2,300. I really... There, now it's a great idea. <laughs> yes. Just I don't drop really, it. I really, really want to just get my hands on it and, like, tr I want to tr see what it feels like. I feel like I'll, I'll feel like I'm in, like, Minority Report or something. I don't know. It, I think, okay. to me, it reminds me of what I thought the Switch should have been, like, with the touch screen and everything interacting with the TV. Yeah. And maybe it is for some games, but um, but I like that idea that it's got hotkeys. My Wacom tablet yeah. for, for drawing, which I'm not an artist, but my daughter right. is has a lot of hot keys and stuff around that you touch them with the pen and it does certain actions and things. And I love the fact that this touchpad now becomes an action center that can be, you know, maybe app developers can create apps that will supplement right. um, your, your applications. Now, as somebody who codes all the time, mm. how would that change in physical dexterity impact the way that you type? Because, I mean, I'm sure you could be looking at your screen and just... Plunking away. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical change of the key. <gasps> so I mean, if you can no, no Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, back I, up. Can I? Okay. Say it. What if you have your hand scanned on it and then it automatically you know, customized the keyboard? You guys know nothing about this. No, it has a real physical keyboard, just like your normal laptop. But your touchpad, the touchpad that you use, your mouse, has been replaced with a touchscreen. Okay, then I misunderstood the news story. I thought it was talking about. I thought it said no. the whole keyboard. No, oh. no, we're you talking the be the touchpad. 
is a multi-touch <laughs> touch screen. I know, it's hard to understand. She has bad vision. Don't make fun of her. It's because the letters were white and she read them in green. <laughs> now does it make sense? It do you does. like it now? It does. It's now amazing. It's cool. It is. It's not as amazing as I thought it was. I'm picturing like two planes of glass. It's no, going to be a no. big touch screen because it's going right, to have a calculator. Well, I just went from here to there. there. You go. It's going to Now be... do we get the news? Now do we understand what's going I on do. here? Now do we understand what's so cool? I think it's even so, better than what you were thinking. Because what you were thinking was nonsense. Now he's nonsense. like, now I can drop it. It's what fine. you were thinking was nonsense. <laughs> no, I don't think it so. It made no sense. Who would ever make that, Jeff? I just thought it was neat. I'm like, that's cool. When Sasha said it is not like anything you've, you're thinking, she didn't mean it that way. <laughs> like that the presenter would completely not understand what it is that it is that they're making. <laughs> That's it. I've had enough of this. I know. Take I know. us away. Yeah. Big yeah. thanks to Marshman, Roy W. Nash, and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. <laughs> thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Like so, and subscribe. Tune in here for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. For more from the Category 5.TV newsroom, visit our website, Category 5.TV. Thank you for watching. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Sasha Rickman. And I'm Jeff Weston. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and good night. Hey, I hope you had fun. Did you have fun? I had fun. It's always an adventure. <laughs> from blurry vision <laughs> to a teleprompter that simply has a battery low indicator full screen over top of the lens of our camera. We always get through. We, we always, always have fun. Do. Yes, exactly. And I hope that you've enjoyed yourself again this week. Jeff, my fun's away. Do you have a good time? I had a great time. <laughs> yeah, good. It's good. been awesome. Yep. I'm going to put on my face mask so that I can't see put anything. These drops I can just meditate. in my eyes. Yeah. To answer Perfect. your question, the foo, uh, tonight has been a longer show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you impaled the paper. <laughs> have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.